All right, let's look at the first problem. In three bowling games, Alice scores 139, 143, and 144. What score will Elise, or nope, sorry, Alice need in a fourth game in order to <laughs> okay, have <laughs> an average score of 145 for all four games? So the way we can set this up is what we know is she, ooh, she already has. That didn't do what I wanted it to do. There we go. She already has 139, she already has 143, and she already has 144. We know that we want the average to be 145, and we know that she's going to do a fourth game. We don't know what she's going to bowl on this fourth game, so we can use a letter or a variable, use the letter N, to represent that fourth game. And the way that we find average is we take all of our data points or all of our numbers and we divide by the total number of numbers that we have. So we have one, two, three, four, even though we don't know what this is yet. So we're going to take all of this, all this whole thing, and we need to divide it by four and that answer needs to equal 145. So if I do what's in the parentheses first and I add up these three numbers, I get 426 plus some number, and when I take that and I divide all that by four, I should get 145. So what I can do here is, in order to get rid of this divided by four, I can multiply all of this by four, and if I do it on one side of my equation, I have to do the exact same thing on the other side of my equation to keep it balanced or equal. So if I do that, this multiplying by 4 gets rid of this division of 4, and I'm just left with 426 plus something gives me 145 times 4, or 580. Now I want to get n all by itself. In order to do that, I can subtract away this 426. If I do it on one side, I have to do the exact same thing on the other side to keep it even. These will cancel each other out, so I'm just left with n, and 580 minus 426 equals 154. So the answer to the question, she would have to bowl in the fourth game, she would have to bowl a 154 to end up with the average of 145. That's how you solve the problem. That's how I'd solve the problem. All right. Mr. West, can you run? Yeah. Here. This is like an eighth grade class, right? What's an eighth grade class? This class? In here, yeah. yeah. I'm doing this for fifth graders, though. Oh, that's Math right. Olympiad. Right. You can be in it next year. Right? You're in fourth grade, right? Yeah. Yeah. Set that. All right, so during a, during a school year, a student was given an award of 25 cents for each math test that he passed and was fined 50 cents for each math test that he failed. At the end of the school year, the student had passed seven times as many tests as he had failed. It's an important piece of information. And he received $3.75. Also another important piece, well, as is this and as is this. Question here is how many tests did he fail? So the first thing I can do is I know that for every test he passes, he gets 25 cents. So I can represent that by saying 25p, or 25 cents for every passed test. And he loses, so he subtracts away, 50f. So for every test that he fails, he's losing 50 cents. When I do that, at the end of the school year, he's got 375 cents. $3.75 is the same as 300, $3.75. Cents. So 25p minus 50f needs to equal 375. The other important piece of information here is that we know that he passed seven times as many tests as he failed. So that means that p for the test that he passed equals 7f. 
Okay, so if I take the number of tests that he failed and I multiply it by seven, I get the number of tests that he passed. So knowing that, the goal of this is to always kind of get rid of one of the variables so that I can solve for just either P or I can solve for F. So the way that I could do that is I could divide both sides by 25. Because whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And if I do that, this is 25 times P. So if I have 25 times something and I divide it by 25, I'm going to get 1, so I'm going to get P left by itself. 50 divided by 25 is 2, so I'd have 2F. And 375 divided by 25 is 25. So my new equation is P minus 2F equals 25. Now here's the part about knowing this and why this is important. Is right now I've got two variables. So I've got P and I've got F. It'd be great if I could just have either all P's or all F's. So one way I could do that is if I know P equals 7F, I can replace this P with that 7F. So my new equation would be, uh, let's do it down. I'm going to do it down here. My new equation was 7F because I replaced this P with this 7F because they're equal to each other, minus 2F equals 25. And if I have 7F and I take 2F away, I'm just left with 5F equals 25. And if I want to get rid of this 5, since it's, being, since it's multiplying, I can divide it by 5, which means I'll divide this by 5. Thank you. And I already messed this up, sorry. This is 15, not 25. 375 divided by 25 is 15. So this equals 15, and this equals 15. So 5F, so you divide them both by 5, and you get F equals 3. So the question is, how many tests did he fail? He failed three. And we could check this by saying that we know that he passed seven times as many as he failed. So if he failed three, seven times as that is 21. So if I take 25 and I multiply it by the 25 cents that he earned for each test that he passed, you get $5.25. And if you take every test that he failed, which is three, and you multiply that by 50 cents, you get $1.50. And if you subtract that away, you get $3.75, which is exactly how much money he made. So that's how you could solve that problem. All right. The next one says, Let's do a different color. Let's do red. All right. If 20 is added to one third of a number, the result is the double of the number. What is the number? So I know that I'm starting with 20, and I'm adding it to one third of a number I don't know, or one third n. I could represent it that way. One third times n. And that equals double the number. So 2 times n. So this variable is the same because we're using the same number. One third of a number is double the number. So just like I've done before, I want to try to um, get this by itself somehow, get the variable by itself. So the one way to do this is this is being multiplied by a third. So in order to make this 1, I have to multiply it by 3. So I can multiply this whole thing by 3 which means I have to multiply this by 3 to keep my equations even. 3 times 20 is 60, and 3 times 1 third is 1, so I'm just left with n. And 3 times 2 is 6, so I have 6n. Now, I can get rid of this n by subtracting n, and if I do it over here, I do it over here. So now I'm left with 60 equals 5n. To get n by itself, let me write that over here. So 60 equals 5n. To get n by itself, I divide it by 5, divide this by 5, and I get 12 equals n. 
So my answer is 12. And we could double check that by saying 20 plus 1 third of 12 is supposed to equal 2 times 12. Well, 20, 1 third of 12 is 4. So I get 20 plus 4. 2 times 12 is 24. 20 plus 4 equals 24. So I know I have the right answer. Cruising right along. It's always fun doing this in front of the audience. <laughs> so weird. All right. Uh, we'll do that. All right. If a stationary store, in a stationary store, pencils have one price and pens have another price. Two pencils and three pens cost 78 cents, um, but Three pencils and two pens cost 72 cents. How much does one pencil cost? All right, so they have different prices. And I know two pencils. Well, the problem here is I've got pencils and pens, which both start with P. So I'm going to go N for pencils. So two pencils, and I'm going to use P for pens. So three P's equals 78 cents. The opposite, or not the opposite, but also that's true, is three pencils and two pens equals 72 cents. And I want to know how much one pencil costs, so how much one N costs. So I'm trying to solve for N in this case. So the first thing I could do is I want to make it so that I can have equivalent um, amounts of either P or N so I can get rid of it. So one way I could do that is I know 3 times 2 is 6. Oops. So I can take this, and I can multiply it by 2. And I can take this equation and multiply it by 3 on both sides so that I get an even number of p's in both equations. So my new equation over here would be 4n plus 6p equals, oh man, One hundred fifty six, and my new equation here is nine N plus six P equals two hundred sixteen. So now what I can do is I can subtract one uh, one equation from the other to eliminate the P's, but I want to flip them around so I don't have negative numbers. So I'm going to take this and move it down here. And if I subtract, 6p minus 6p is 0p, so these are eliminated. So I'm left with 5n equals 60. That's 216 minus 156 is 60. To get n by itself, I'm going to divide it by 5, which means I divide this by 5, which means n equals 12. So the cost of one pencil is 12 cents. I mean, these, I think so because they, this is kind of expanding on what we were doing through the last thing, so I'm hoping that they kind of are getting that, adding it to it. I don't think they, so I'm talking to Mr. Framke right now, in case you're wondering. I guess.